Well, hello, hello, hello. And he didn't say it right. It is Gun Freedom Radio. All right. Always got to get that out of my system. Well, I am so honored to be here today. And when I look out across this crowd, you know what I see? I see leadership, right? So that's what I want to talk to you about today is the idea of leadership. I am indeed a Second Amendment advocate, but I have spent my life studying business and psychology. And one of my mentors in those fields is Dr. Henry Cloud, and he summed up leadership in one simple phrase that has been a guiding force in my decision making in how my husband and I run our businesses, my actions in both hiring and firing, and in how I interact with my elected officials. This phrase is both brilliant and simple, and it is, you get what you create or what you allow. If you are unhappy with your current situation, this phrase tells you exactly where to look for solutions, and that is at the person we see every time we pass a mirror. That is you, and that is me. Right? Too often we point our fingers at the people who work in the building behind me and at the media and at the whole litany of thems and theys, right? Who are eroding our rights and infringing on our liberties. And there is definitely effort being put in by those who hate freedom and who love to live with the boot of tyranny on their own necks and ours. Hell no. But my fellow Americans, everything always comes down to personal responsibility, right? And that is you. Our founding fathers and mothers certainly embodied these principles of creating and allowing. They fought, bled, starved, and died as they created this nation, which allowed their children and ours to thrive, wrapped in the precious and unique American constitutional protections. They created the impossible. They were outgunned, outmanned, outfinanced, and were a band of people just like me and my husband, shopkeepers, moms, dads, ordinary warriors. And like you, people who finally said, enough, we will no longer allow unjust laws to slowly smother us. They said, enough, you will not take away our tools of self-defense that protect us from predators, four-legged, and two, right? They looked little King George Beto O'Rourke III, or whatever his name was, looked him right in his wild, manic, power-hungry eyes and said, enough, we will our founders, the famous and those forgotten by history, handed over the keys to this shiny new nation, wrote us an owner's manual, and prayed that we would value their hard work and sacrifice and try not to wreck this beautiful new experiment in freedom and liberty. They created, and then we slowly and incrementally allowed those who hate liberty to chip the paint bald the tire and stain the upholstery with a splash of tyranny here and a dribble of infringements there. And worse still, we have allowed them to careen impulsively down the highway of emotional decision-making, ignoring every one of the warning signs and threatening to crash this perfect union headlong into the craggy cliffs of red flag gun laws and universal background checks. Our founders had one rule, eternal vigilance. But we outsourced our responsibilities to people we call our representatives and then failed to hold them accountable to how 
we wanted to be represented. Well, no more. Let yesterday be the last day we allow these representatives to feign ignorance of the will of the people. Let tomorrow be the first day that we begin to teach our children and our children's children the lessons of world history. And let today be the day that patriots from sea to shining sea become involved in the political process, local, state, and federal, to make the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Second Amendment the focal point of our work. And when we do this, my brothers and sisters in freedom, united and together, we, the people, will create a future that honors the sacrifices made by so many that will once again allow our common bond to be liberty. Thank you.